Let's go to Norman calling in from St. Louis, Missouri. Norman, what's your question for Adriel? Hey, Adriel. Uh, I've been listening to you for about two months now, and uh, I find you very uh, very mannerly, very Christian-like, and very spot-on with your uh, theology. Uh, my question is uh, that I, I, I've been a Christian since I'm 17. I'm 63 now. I've seen all the trends and whatnot, but I follow, like, stats and eschatology and whatnot uh, through the years. But recently I looked up on Google and it said like 83, 87% of Americans believe in God and or a higher power. So I guess I could be Allah. But uh, the uh, 63, I think, percent are Christians. And then they said there's uh, 2.5 billion Christians on the earth right now. And I'm like, Every day of my life, I turn on the news or I go out driving around. People cuss me. They try to drive me, you know, road rage over petty nothing stuff. There's, we, we have a mass shooting almost every day now, which that means four people or more are shot and are killed. And, and it's just hard, it's hard for me to accept the fact that 63% of Americans are Christian and there's 2.5 billion they sure don't act like Jesus to me. I hate to be hardcore, but <laughs> it seems like we're the Christians are kind of uh, dwindling, shall we say? Yeah, I mean, well, if if your question is right, are there really 2.5 billion Christians in the world? Wouldn't the world be a better place? Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, you do have a lot of people who profess faith in Jesus. Um, you do have a lot of cultural Christianity, I think, throughout the world. People who were baptized. Um, and who maybe went to church for a time or, or do go to church, um, but it, it's really just a sort of nominal religion. And that's how I was, to be honest with you, for um, for many years. You know, I, I would go to uh, church or go to mass um, and would probably answer, you know, if you asked me, you know, are you a Christian? I, would, I probably would have said yes, um, but I didn't really know the gospel. I didn't really have a personal relationship with Jesus at all. Uh, I really didn't like going to church. I thought it was the most boring thing on the planet. I remember early on praying uh, when I was really convicted of my sin and realized, okay, I need, I need Christ. I need the gospel. I remember praying to God and saying to God, Lord, I know I need your help, but I really don't want to go to church. Like, is there, is there some kind of a loophole for me? Can I, can I be a Christian? Can I accept you? Can I have my sins forgiven and just not have to go to church? Because it just seemed like the most boring thing in the world to me. And I think there are a lot of people out there who identify as Christians, but that's how they feel. You know, they don't really understand the gospel. Um, they don't spend any time uh, thinking about God's word, what he says, how he calls us to live. They don't have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And so it's so important for us when we, when we think about um, these things that we that we focus on the truth, uh, that we communicate the gospel in very clear ways. It's not just being quote unquote conservative that makes you a Christian. It's not uh, where your parents went to church. It's having that living, vital faith in in Jesus. It's walking with Christ in in and you know having been justified through what Jesus did for us. It's, it's that reality. Jesus said in in Matthew uh, chapter seven, uh, verse thirteen, "Enter by the narrow gate." For the gate is wide, and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow, and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. Uh, I wonder if, if we've really grappled with his words there. Uh, we've, we've really transformed um, the call of Christ, and specifically the gospel, into something that's, that's not faithful, I think, to what we see in the New Testament. And most people, if you ask them, even in Christian churches— what is the gospel, would have a very difficult time articulating it to you. Most people, I think, Norman, this is something I've seen, go straight to the law. They say, well, you know, be a good person, love your neighbors, um, don't cheat on your taxes, that kind of a thing. I'm, I'm a Christian because I'm a good person. But no, that's not what, what makes you a Christian. We're Christians through the blood of Jesus Christ, through holy baptism and faith in the gospel, recognizing that we were dead in trespasses and sins, but through Jesus Christ, we've been made alive. And as those who have been made alive, we do want to love our neighbors well, imperfectly as we do it. Uh, it's what we're called to. And so uh, may the Lord really bring about a revival throughout, you know, his church in all places, you know, all over the world. And that only happens through the faithful preaching of God's word. So that's what we need to recover, I think, more than anything else, Norman.